So our next unit is going to be talking about special segments and triangles and then talking about the points where those segments all intersect inside the triangle, which are called triangle centers. In order to know about the centers, we need to review these segments that we learned last year in Math 2. So to start with, the median. Remember the median goes from the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. Anytime you see the word median, you should be thinking midpoint. And remember, midpoint means something is split perfectly in half. So, if I know that HL is a median, then that means that point L over here is the midpoint. And that means that this side, 3x minus 2, will equal this side, x plus 7. And I literally can just set them equal to each other. So 3x minus 2 equals x plus 7. I'll solve this and get 2x equals 9. So x would equal 4.5. I can then take that and plug it back in to either one of these. So when I plug it back in, 4.5 plus 7 is going to equal 11.5 or 3 times 4.5 minus 2 is going to equal 11.5. So that means this is 11.5, this one's 11.5, and the entire thing would equal 23. So again, anytime you're dealing with a midpoint, you're thinking, or medians, you're thinking midpoint, midpoint, you're thinking that you might have a median. Okay? Next one for us to talk about is the altitude. Altitude goes from a vertex to a right angle. So anytime you have an altitude, you know instantly you've got a right angle or a 90 degree angle, if we want to think about it in terms of angle measurements. Okay, so right angle or 90 degree angle. Altitudes can be inside, outside, or actually on the side of the triangle. So for instance, in this one, this is an altitude coming straight down there because it's going from a vertex to a right angle. In fact, this side is also an altitude because it's going from vertex to a right angle. But anytime you see altitude, you're thinking, I've got a right angle. Next segment for us to talk about is a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector is pretty straightforward. The name tells you exactly what it is. Something has to be perpendicular which means it meets at a right angle, and it has to bisect something, which means it goes through its midpoint or splits it into two equal segments. So the fact that these two segments are equal, that segment and that segment are equal, that means the thing has been bisected right there at that point, and it obviously has the right angle, so this straight up and down segment is the perpendicular bisector of the bottom segment. So perpendicular bisector has to have that right angle, and then it goes through the midpoint, which means it splits something into two equal parts. Fourth segment for us to talk about is an angle bisector. And I don't have a separate picture of an angle bisector here, but there is one definitely in this picture. When this segment comes straight up through the middle here, it takes this top angle and splits it into two equal parts. So for instance, if this side was, say, 20 degrees, then this side would also be 20 degrees. That's what an angle bisector is. Now this segment straight down the middle, it's an angle bisector of the top, but it's also going vertex to a right angle, which means this segment is an altitude. But it's also going vertex to a midpoint down here at the bottom, which means this segment is a median. And because it forms the right angle at the bottom here and splits the bottom in half, it is also a perpendicular bisector. So in this case, the altitude is also a median and a perpendicular bisector. There is only one triangle where all of these segments end up being the exact same thing, and that triangle is an isosceles triangle, and by extension, an equilateral triangle. 
So in an isosceles triangle, that segment down the middle is altitude, median, perpendicular bisector, and angle bisector. And then I guess the only thing for us really to think about is that in an isosceles triangle, everything on the left is a mirror image of the right. So like if those were 20 and those are 20, that means this would be 90 and this would be 90, which means if I just add up to 180 for the triangle, those would be 70 and 70. And then if I just kind of, I'm going to make something up, I'm going to say that this has a length of 8. That means that has a length of 8. This has a length of 15, which means the other side would have a length of 15. And it, actually, if I did Pythagorean theorem, 8 squared plus 15 squared, I could get the leg squared, which in this case would be 17. So if this side is 17, then this side is 17. And so everything's a mirror image of the other one in an isosceles triangle.